Hi everyone, uh, my name is Clara Halvorsen. I'm live here, live here from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna start the talk about the global goals and why they are so important. So please just stay tuned. So, hi again, everyone. Now it's uh, one o'clock here in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and we are going to start the first talk about the global goals. My name is uh, Clara Helveson. I live here in Copenhagen, Denmark, and uh, over the next weeks, we're going to talk about uh, the global goals. Why are they so important? Uh, what can we do? in order to make sure that the goals are reached and why is it important that all of us start to act upon the goals instead of just talking about them. So today we're going to talk about all the goals, the history, why it's important and then in the next coming section, sessions we're going to dig deeper into each of the goals, talk about different targets and talk about different people who are acting upon the goals and what you and me can do in order to reach the goal. It will be uh, the world's biggest to-do list this each time. Uh, we will uh, do a small commitment. We will do some small challenges. We will uh, take the ball and take it out to the world and act after we're done talking. I guess uh, we can start by asking ourselves, we are, we are all doing sports. Why should, we, uh, why should we talk about the global goals? Why are sports? and the global goals so interlinked why it is so important. First of all, sport is one of the solutions to reach the goal. Sports, sports is a way to, to build bridges between people. It's a way to, to create encouragement, to create excitement. It's a way for people to meet and to be together upon something that's fun, that's easy. And it's a way to create very, very strong communities uh, and that's so important if we should reach the goals. Furthermore, sport is also affected if we don't reach the goals. Imagine that the climate change is out of control, then uh, where should we play? With the balls. Uh, if uh, wars are unstoppable, uh, where should we play? There's a lot of different areas where sports will be affected. So that's also why all of us, why all of the athletes out there needs to uh, take the ball needs to uh, act and needs to work in order to reach the goals. Of course, the world is also in a in a very special situation uh, right now with the COVID-19 epidemic uh, that is that is seen all around the world. And as you can see here, I'm also in a in an empty office here at World's Best News in the, in Copenhagen uh, because we all need to uh, to take a to stay stay away from too many people and uh, and to take care of the special situation, but but in this situation the global goals are also important and I guess this is uh, the first learning the first thing I really want you to remember because all what the global goals are important about is what we need to remember right now when we are slowly opening the world again we need to do it in a better way we need to build back better. And that is the global goals a recipe upon it's a recipe upon how we can create a stronger world, greener world, and a better world. Furthermore, the global goals are built upon a foundation of us all being in this together. And we are also in this together with the situation right now. We need to remember uh, the commitments reached with the global goals that we all have to work together, that we have to take care of those who are most vulnerable and that we all have to act in our local communities and do the best we can to make sure that that we are all getting on the right track and that we're stopping this uh, global pandemic. So I believe the global goals are more important that, than ever before and that's why we're going to talk about them today. So uh, who am I? Why, am, why should I do this? talk you can say well as i said before my name is clara halverson and i live in copenhagen uh, in denmark it's a 
almost sunny day uh, out here it's uh, 1 p.m so in the middle of the day and i work as a head of campaign at the world's best news and the world's best news is uh, the danish communication platform for the global goals it's our task to uh, engage the danes in the goals to make sure that they know the goals and they know how to act upon them furthermore we are small independent media focusing on progress and focusing on solution. We work with constructive news and with the ambition that, that you need to get a more nuanced picture of the world. We believe that nuances create hope and that hope create action. And we work very hard to engage people and give them knowledge of global goals. Because if you know about global goals, if you know how uh, to act upon them, why they're important, you're also more likely to go out and go out and act. And furthermore, we believe that if people know about the progress, about the good solutions that are actually out there in the world, they will also themselves work to create solutions and to work for a better world. Thus, at World's Best News and in everything I do myself when I work the global goals, we work with the foundation of hope. And I think hope is a, is a so important word to remember, but when talking about the global goals, also in the situation right now, that if we work hard together, then we can actually create better solutions. We need to believe that the world is actually moving forward, that it actually makes sense to, uh, to work very hard, to work very hard for the goals. And research, Swedish research actually also shows that if young people are motivated by a constructive hope, they're more likely to go out and act. And I guess, uh, I guess we also know it from ourselves that, that we are more likely to act, at least I am, if I can see that what I'm doing is actually moving the world forward. If I believe that I'm doing the right thing and that it's moving forward. And it's the same with the global goals. And I guess this is also why I'm starting with hope when I'm start, starting to talk about the global goals, because the global goals was founded on a foundation of hope. The global goals are an agenda of hope, of solutions, and of progress. And it's built, and re remember it is, imagine this, the global goals are built on a universal agreement that we can create a better, a safer, and a stronger world for everyone. I think even in times like this, I think it's so beautiful and so important to remember that in 2015, all of the world's leaders sat down and they decided that what we deserve, all of us, all of you watching out there, we deserve a, a better world, a greener world, and we can actually build it together. And the agenda of hope was furthermore central because they knew, the world's leaders knew when the goals were created in 2015, that this could actually happen, that the world was able to do it before, to do it again, because the global goals are not the first plan for the world. In 2000, uh, the Millennium Development Goals were created, and it was the first global plan, the first United Nations global plan for the whole world. It was the first set of goals. And, um, it, would create, it was created um, just in the beginning of the new millennium. And those of you out there who are old enough to remember uh, the change of the millennium, you also remember, I remember how big a thing it actually was. You know, when you're jumping into a new year, it's also a big thing, new beginning. There's a lot of like new year's resolutions that people want to, uh, to uh, yeah to improve on, to, to make in order to improve their lives. Uh, and it was a bit like the same, it was just better. It was, it was a whole new millennium. It's a, it was a whole new chapter in the history of the world. And that was what the leaders back in 2000 actually saw. And it made the Millennium Development Goals. It created eight goals back in 2000 for a better world. And it was the leaders coming together to say that they believed just a step into the new millennium that they had the responsibility to create a better world for all of us. So it gave birth to, um, to the Millennium Development Goals. And the Millennium Development Goals were eight goals for a better world. 
it has to focus on eradicating poverty, achieve a universal primary educa education, promote gender equality, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, ensure environmental stability, and create a global partnership. And it was eight goals, and as you can hear, it had a, had a focus on, on some countries who had to move forward and other countries having to, to help that agenda. And um, it has slow start, I think it's fair to say. In 2000, or in the years following 2000, there was not much, uh, much clubhouse live sessions uh, from Copenhagen around the global goals. Uh, and it's not, it, it, it took some time for, for action to be seen, for the world to move forward. But then in 2011, something big happened. In 2011, the world had extreme poverty. It was, imagine, it was such a big step for the world. The world had the number of people living in extreme poverty and, and it gained the momentum, it gained some success and it also gave some, uh, some push forward to the rest of the, of the Millennium Development Goals and, and action was actually seen. And when the goals met its deadline in 2015, um, around four of the goals uh, was actually reached. And it was a huge success for the world. I think there's still discussions going on and why was all of the goals not reached? And of course, in an ideal world, all of the goals was reached. But it was still a success because the world has shown itself, the world leaders have shown itself that if they work very hard together, if they put all of their forces together in order to work towards some very clear goals that they have set together, then it was actually able to meet, the, you were actually able to meet these goals. And that was, that was fantastic. It was, it gave, it gave us some, I guess, a, a feeling of hope among the world. And it also gave a feeling of, of the fact that we were not yet there. And that was uh, what gave birth to the 17 uh, sustainable uh, development goals that you see here and the, the ball and the flags behind me and everything else. They were created on the foundation of the Millennium Development Goals, of the fact and the hope that the world can reach big goals if they work together, but also on a, on a thought that, uh, that we were not there yet, because why should we only have extreme poverty? Why should we not end extreme poverty completely? Why shouldn't we get all kids in school all around the world why should we not make sure that gender equality was met, that we took care, better care, much, much better care of our planet and the animals living all around and took better care of the humans all around the world, the citizens all around the world and worked stronger together. And that, that wish to get the job done, to, to create some new goals, gave birth to these 17 goals. It's 17 goals that uh, have to be met in 2030. They were created in 2015, which gave the world 15 years to reach uh, what I believe is uh, the most ambitious plan ever seen before. It is a plan that they want to eradicate extreme poverty, to end hunger, to not only uh, ensure that everyone is healthy, but there's also a sense of of well-being all around the world, that we have not just everyone in school, we have quality education, that we have gender equality, clean water and sanitation, that we have uh, affordable energy, that we have decent work, decent work for everyone, that we have economic growth, that we have innovation and infrastructure and industry, that we reduce inequality all around the world, within countries and between countries, that we create sustainable cities and sustainable communities where all of us would like to, like to live, and that we take better care of the world, that we have a responsible consumption and production. It's not just about producing and consuming, it's about doing it in a responsible way, that we stop climate change and that we do it fast. So we take better care 
of our oceans that with the life on the water that we take care of the life on land that we have peace we have justice we have strong institutions and then most importantly that we do it all together in strong partnerships for the goals so that was the 17 goals that was created for a better world for people for planet and for prosperity and these goals put all of us in the same boat all of us and i don't know where you're watching from but all of us are in the same boat with the millennium development goals these goals and i think this is an important thing to remember have to be met in every country all around the world it's here in denmark it's in the united states it's in Uganda, it's in China, it's everywhere. And all of the world leaders have committed themselves to get these goals implemented in their country, to work upon reaching these goals. And that's why they're so important. And I think it's also remember, and it's, it's, it's fair to say that that's it's a very ambitious plan. It's, it will not be easy. It's not something that you just uh, go out and whoop, then the goals are implemented. All of the governments and all of us also have to work very hard if, um, if these goals should be met in 2030. The goals are, are also interconnected. And I think this is also a, an important thing to remember also when we're doing the following sessions on each of the goals that these goals cannot be reached one by one. If you work very hard on one goal, it will have a spillover effect, both positively and negatively on other goals. So, so when creating plans to reach all of these, you have to think about how they're interlinked, how uh, you can uh, eradicate poverty, but still do it in a sustainable way, how you can make sure that Good health and well-being are created for everyone, and still uh, make sure that there's no hunger. They're all they're all interlinked. They're one they're one big spider web, you can say. Uh, and if you adjust on one of them, if you work towards reaching one of them, you'll also uh, you'll also reach some of the others. Then uh, then when the goals were created, it was created as a traditional uh, United Nations plan. It means it was a uh, Basically, uh, like this, you can say it was a uh, black tech on a white paper. It was a UN resolution, uh, Agenda 2030. But then there was a guy, a Swedish guy, who said, well, if we have to make this plan for people, for prosperity, for planet, if we have to make a plan for everyone, then we also need to give the goals an identity, a visual identity. We need to make sure that no, where, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what language you speak, then you can see the goal and then you can understand what the goal is all about. So he created these 17 icons. And I guess, in my opinion, this is why, why one of the reasons why the goals are, are so famous, why all of you out there who participate in the Global Goals World Cup choose a goal to play for, is because you can identify with the goal, with the icon. And no matter where you are, if you're here in Denmark or if you're somewhere else in the world, you can look at this icon for quality education. You can see a book and you can see a pen and you will understand this is something about reading, it's about writing, it's something about schools. And I guess that this universal language have, have also been a part of why the goals are getting so much uh, fame, why it's getting uh, popular and why it's getting easy to adapt for all of us. Time is running, uh, but before we end today, I also want to uh, to just dig a little bit into the technical stuff because uh, there's not only uh, 17 goals, there's also 169 uh, targets, and there's a lot of indicators as well. And we will dig deeper into them in each session when we talk about uh, goal number one, no poverty tomorrow. We'll also talk about uh, the targets and indicators. But just to give you a uh, brief overview now. Then you can say there's the 17 goals. It's these, it's the ones you know, the 17 goals set a direction for where the world is going, where we need to be in 2030. 
Then we have uh, 169 uh, targets. And the target, target is a way to broaden the content of the goals and explain how it's reached. And if you look at the targets, you'll see there will be some who has a, a number. It's action, it's action within uh, one of the goals. And then there's some that have a letter, and that's the means of implementation. It's how the goals are reached. Then we have 244 international indicators. And the indicators, and I know this is very technical, but it's good to know, they measure the way, they measure implementation of the goals in all of the countries. And it's still not a fully developed uh, system. Uh, it's not possible to measure all of the indicators in all of the world, and it's not possible, um, it's not fully developed, it's not created indicators a full a full set of indicators for all of the goals, but it's but it's work in progress. And having indicators is also a way to sure ensure that we are on the right track to measure uh, how far we are uh, with the plan. And then it's up to the country, or you can do some national indicators, and we're doing that here in Denmark. And I'm mentioning because hopefully it can also serve as a as an inspiration for other countries, because what we have decided here in Denmark is that we want to do a national set of targets or of indicators. We want to uh, measure how we are performing here in Denmark because it's not possible for us uh, to, it's possible for us to measure on a lot of the indicators, but a lot of them are not, are already met, which means that, that we cannot uh, measure if we're moving in the right directions or not. So right now we are in the middle of creating a, a supplementing set of uh, national indicators, and we're going to use them here in Denmark to make sure that we are on the right track, that we are moving forward, because here we still have some quite big challenges that we have to solve if these should be met uh, before 2030, and the national indicators is a way of making sure that this will happen. And then there's this one concept, and I think since we're going to going to dig deeper into uh, each of the goals in the following sessions, I want to spend a little time uh, by talking about it now. And that's the fact that together with all of these goals, the world also created an, an ambition of leaving no one behind. The global goals include this ambition, leaving no one behind is, a, is part of the framework of the implementation of the goal. And I think, um, I think it's, it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful things with the global goals that that we should leave no one no one behind this is a universal plan it's for all of us and it has to be met for every citizen in every country all around the world and i think sometimes uh, i work a lot with the goals and sometimes it, i think guess it can seem hard and it can seem difficult to know what to do with goals and how should they be met and can they be met by 2030. And then at least I think, and maybe it will also serve as an inspiration for all of you, I think it's 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 nice and it's important to remember that, that when the goals were created, the world leaders sat down together and they said, well, we don't, we have to reach these goals, but we also make sure that we're leaving no one behind when doing it. And, and these goals, they're not met before every citizen in every country all around the world is included and and that this plan is a reality for them. And I think it's important to remember, it's important to remember that when we're talking about the global goals, what the work we are doing, maybe in the teams out there, or the work we're going to do with this to-do list, then we have to make sure that everyone are included in the plan, that everyone uh, ask that everyone have their rights met, and I and I think that's something that we uh, that we should should work upon, and that we should remember. And then I hope that you will remember in all of the work you're doing with the global goals from now, because I want you to work. And I think uh, I think that is that is the key message of today's session. It's it's a decade of action. The United Nations Secretary General he calls the decade of action. We have ten years before the goal should be met, and we're not there yet. We're far from there. And it also means that we're done talking. We're simply done talking. It's time for us to act. 
and it's time for us to act now. And of course, um, you can say, yeah, well, it's about the governments who should uh, act. It's the leaders of the world who should act, and they make big rules and big laws. And of course, they have a responsibility. They have a huge responsibility. But you and I, we also have responsibility. This is also our goals. And we also have to use these goals as a mirror to say, how can I improve the way I'm living? What can I do to contribute to this plan? We should also just stop talking about the goals and actually acting. And this is why this session is called the world's biggest to-do list. Because we're going to do something in the end of each session. From session to session, I'm going to give you a to-do list. I'm going to throw out some challenges. And then I hope you will take the ball and actually commit to those challenges. And you can do it, you can do it on a broad level. You can choose a goal. I always say that, that, that it's okay to say, well, there's a lot of goals. There's one that I care uh, more about. So choose one goal. Choose two. Choose one maybe uh, where you uh, were not improving very well. Uh, and then decide on a or choose something where you think this is this is something that's near to my heart, it's something where I can actually act. And then choose on a small action that you can actually do tomorrow morning when you wake up. Uh, in Denmark, it's, it's raining a lot. And I, when I do these challenges, I always say, when you commit to something, it should be something that when you wake up tomorrow morning and it's raining and it's cold outside, then you can still do it. You still want to do it. Then it's still something that, that you can actually manage to do. But you have to take the small steps. So, so I'll put up, I'll pick a goal for each session and then I'll put up uh, some challenges that I hope you'll follow. And today, because we've been talking about all the goals, I've chosen that we're, we're working with leave no one behind until tomorrow. Because leaving no one behind, and that brings me back to where I started, it's so important in these days. It's so important with the situation that the world is in right now. Because this global pandemic also means that some people are extra vulnerable. Some people are, are isolating. Some people are, are feeling very, very lonely these days. And, and we need to include those as well. Uh, we need to, um, to reach out and, and make sure that they, they are also remembered. And, and it's a small thing that I want you to do, but I really hope that you'll do so. So, so in the spirit of leaving no one behind, in the spirit of, of also uh, remembering uh, those who are maybe feeling extra lonely these days, uh, I want you to commit to, when this session is done very soon, to call somebody that is feeling lonely these days, or go uh, with a distance, uh, a big distance, go talk with them, but, or call them and tell them that you care about them, have a talk about what they did today, what they think about the situation, something nice. Um, talk about that, that, that spring is here, summer will come and this situation will get better because it will, and that you will see each other in real life, uh, in real life soon. Yes, in Denmark we says that, that, that we have to stand together uh, apart, and that's also uh, what we're going to do with this. So. Uh, I, I challenge you, take the ball, uh, call someone that needs a call right now, that feels lonely, that, uh, that needs to, to feel loved, to feel included, and then comment in the section below here who you're going to call, and then we're going to start the session tomorrow by talking about that. And uh, that marks the end of the session for today. Uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Danish time, we'll talk about uh, goal one. Uh, no poverty. And if you have any uh, questions, if you have anything that you'd like me to talk about, please comment below as well, and then I'll make sure to include it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This is my first uh, live ever, so uh, it was also a challenge for me, but, uh, but I hope you enjoyed. At least I thought it was, uh, was very nice, and now I'm going to grab my phone myself, and I'm going to uh, call my grandmother and ask her uh, how she is, because I think uh, she could need a call right now. So see you tomorrow. Remember, leave no one uh, behind. And remember our small challenge, call somebody that uh, needs to be 
uh, call right now that needs to fuel a lot because we all have to do something in order to reach the goals. Bye.